بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه. سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم. We have another uh, announcement. On Monday they, there will be a community of Qaq in the Masjid. Monday will be a community of Qaq in the Masjid. Just tell your friends and be there with you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه. But dear brothers and sisters, سيدنا يوسف had a very turbulent life. He was the son of the prophet. Uh, at a young age, Allah سبحانه وتعالى gave him the gift of تأويل that he could interpret dreams and visions. And then at a young age, his brothers threw him in the dwell. And then people got him out of the dwell, strangers, made him a slave practically, sold him. He was bought by the Aziz. So after he was in the dwell, almost dying, if it weren't for Allah's protection, he now grew up in the house of the Aziz and lived a very nice life. And in the, that very same house was the, the reason for him to be imprisoned again. He was uh, tempted by the fitna of the Nisa because his beauty was a beauty of a kind. And so after that he stayed for seven years in prison at least. And after he got out, he became the Aziz and he told him, let me be the minister of finance. So his entire life was an up and down, up and down. And he's seen the worst and the best of life. He's seen everything. And he became a prophet. And he was treated badly by his siblings and then returned their action the way, the best way possible and was good. So when you look at Sayyidina Yusuf's life, you see that he went through everything, everything possible, everything one can imagine. In the dunya and in the akhir, as he, and from a dunya point of view and from an akhir point of view. He was the poorest people, he was a man with no freedom. And he became the richest, most influential person. He was all by himself, and then he was back with his family, and so on and so forth. He went through every possible situation. So when he looked back at his life, he said, Rabbi qad atayitani min al oh Allah, you gave me kingdom, you gave me wisdom, you gave me the ability to interpret dreams, you made me a prophet. He recalls all the good things in his life and all the benefits from his life to boil it down and break it down to one point, one major sin. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I lived this turbulent life and I have nothing but one wish. Take my life away in a state where I am a Muslim. Let me die as a Muslim and follow the righteous people and gather me with the righteous people. And here's a story, my brothers and sisters, I remember about 10 years ago or more, now it's almost 12 or 11 years ago, I spent the summer in Geneva to improve my French. And over there I got to know a family which was an extraordinary family. The mother was a college professor. The father was, was a college professor. Both of them were teaching at the University of Georgetown just to come back to Europe, to Geneva, because she would become the dean of, of, of uh, the medical college, and he would work in the UN, the United Nations. Both of them were fluent in French and fluent in English. That's with the Arabic, of course. And when I mean fluent, then I mean they would speak the language perfectly. I have rarely seen a person speaking both languages in such a good way as if they were native speakers. And this was husband and wife. All of their kids were either college graduates or still in college. All of their kids were fluent in Arabic, French, 
and English. And if I mean fluent, I mean they were speaking the language as if they were native speakers. So I got to know, I became friends with one of their kids, their youngest kids. And we went to play basketball. And I was surprised they had a really big basketball court. And I had a nice surprise that right next to the basketball court was the Islamic center of Geneva. A nice, beautiful, big mosque. So we were playing and everything was cool. And then I saw that the sun was about to go down, the sun was about to set. And it was Maghrib time. There were actually people who belonged, young kids from the masjid who belonged to uh, the masjid playing with us. So I asked them how much is left to the Maghrib and they told me, yeah, about 20 minutes. So we can play one game. The, the guy told me we can play one game and we would have enough time for uh, wudu and prayer. I said, fine. After the game, I asked that young, the youngest kid of them. He at that time was maybe 23, 22. I was like, yeah, how about we pray Maghrib and then maybe we can go drink something or anything. We were right in front of the masjid. And he told me, oh yeah, about that. I don't practice. I mean, like, I, I got the question. I didn't ask any further. I said, okay, is, is it cool if I go in and pray? He's like, yeah, sure. And this is when it hit me, when it struck me. You have everything you have in this dunya, but still you have nothing. And that's when it hit me when I said, Wallahi, I hope both of my parents wouldn't be able to read and write, and that my father would be a simple, illiterate worker, but he would teach me Islam. What do you have if you have everything in this dunya, and then your son tells you, I mean, the words he, he told me with, I'm still, if I remember the story up until today, I'm in a shock. I don't practice. And what did you accomplish in this dunya? What did you receive in this dunya? What did you do in this dunya? You have a PhD, and you have a house, and you have prestige, and you have this, and you have that. But at the end, if your kids do not identify as Muslims, I'm not saying they, they, they see themselves, or well, they're Muslims, they don't even identify themselves. They see that, yeah, Islam is something, and uh, I am something else. What did you take them from the dunya? Sayyidina Yusuf has seen all the fruits and all the things of the dunya. And he was in the highest positions and ranks of the dunya. And still at the end he had one wish. His wish was, Tawaffani Muslim. Take my life away as a Muslim. Why? Because no matter how much you achieve and accomplish in this dunya, if you don't have La ilaha illallah with him, it's in vain, it's for nothing. You have accomplished and received nothing in your life. And I'm not diminishing any academic standard or accomplishment or anything. I'm saying go ahead and achieve the highest ranks in the dunya. But no, without La ilaha illallah, nothing will be worth anything. We have an example, we have Nelson Mandela, which is a person that I and I think the entire worldwide community respects and has accomplished many things for community and many things for humanity and human rights. Every one of us acknowledges that. But when it comes to the death, and you die without having La ilaha illallah in your pocket, it is no matter, no matter what you received and accomplished in the dunya, there is no use. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, He will forgive each and every sin, except for la ilaha illallah. Which means that there is no surrogate, there is no substitute, there is nothing that can make up for la ilaha illallah. And the greatest personalities have realized that. And therefore, when Sayyidina Ibrahim was about to die, he called his young kids, and they were sitting at his bed. And he said, 
And Kuntu Shuhada if Hadar Yaqub al Maut, I mean when Yaqub was about to die, father of Sidna Yusuf. And Kuntu Shuhada if Hadar Yaqub al Maut with Qala Li Banihi, Mata Abudun al Bad. Sidna Yaqub was about to die. And he had his kids, Sidna Yusuf and his siblings. And he gathered them around him in his bed. And he didn't ask, what are we going to do with the heritage? Who is going to take the house? Who is going to take the car? Who is going to take the company? Who is going to marry her? Who is going to do this? He asked them, who are you going to worship after me when I'm gone? And therefore, each and every one of us is scary and worried for his kids and wants to provide for his kids. And that is right, and that is a good thing. Look for the best schools, try to find them a home, try to find them a good environment, try to find them a good education. But before all of that, try to find them. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You will have committed the worst crime, and you will have reserved the place in Jahannam for you and your kids. If he had, will not have taught them, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And therefore, we have so many great personalities. And they will be great as long as they're in the dunya. And everyone wants to be them or wants to have their accomplishment as long as they're in the dunya. But when the time of death comes, everyone will back off. And everyone will be scared. And everyone will say, I wish I would have been a nothing, a nobody without education, without anything, without money, cleaning my entire life, even cleaning toilets and bathrooms my entire life, but having la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, you will commit the worst crime towards you and your own kids, each and every one of us, if we keep that from our eyes. We go ahead. We will be successful in the dunya. We will be influential in the dunya, and we will receive the highest ranks of the dunya. But at the end, the major thing is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We live that tawheed, and we understand that tawheed, and most importantly, that we die realizing and living and embodying La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, because there will be nothing, nothing, nothing in the entire world that will make it up. If you have debts, your kids will campaign for you. Your best friends can pay for you. If you've done wrong to anyone, we can talk to him after your death and we can convince him and he might forgive you. If you've committed sins, if you've dragged your entire life, I'm not going to forgive it to you like this. But if you do not witness that there is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, there is nothing in the world that can make it up and will make up for it. And therefore, we testimony and witness here by Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is no God, no one worthy of worship but you and that the Messenger of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your Prophet and Messenger. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He let us live under La ilaha illallah and takes our way or takes our life away with La ilaha illallah and that we will stand in front of Him testimony, bearing witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. I pull the phone behind, I will stop for the line, you know, the stuff you know, in the whole world of the world.